This video is a brief introduction to musical set theory. We use groups of notes to make music, and usually this isn't all the notes that we can use. We use just part of those notes, a subset of those notes. For instance, on the piano, it's possible to play 12 different notes. All these ones, black and white. And then it just repeats. But we don't play all 12 of those typically, we just pick seven of them in a specific order here. And that is called a scale. Here I've listed the, the way we move up in the scale by whole steps and half steps. Uh, additionally, we have what's thought of as a beginning of a scale. It's the main point we come back to, the center point of everything, and that's called um, the tonic. It's the first note. Each of the other notes has a number for it, too because we think about it doing things and going certain places. This is the tonic and the supertonic and the mediant, so on. Each of these has a number for it. But in set theory, we don't have any specific number. We don't have any specific first or last note in a scale. It isn't a scale, it's just a group of notes, and so it can start in whatever order we decide upon. So we don't have the C for instance, getting this number one carat in a set, like we did when we had it in a major scale. It's just one of the notes in a bag of notes that we can use to make music with. What I have done, though, is below it I've labeled C as zero to show the interval distance, how many half steps between this first note and the next notes. So between C and D flat, for instance, there's one half step. And between C, between C and E, there's four half steps. Between C and F sharp, six. Between C and G, seven. So down below this set, I've labeled the notes by how much distance there is between them in half steps. And this is called integer notation. I just use numbers, integers, to label how many half steps I've moved between the notes. Now, I don't have to have them start out in the exact same place all the time. I can just have the same relationship of intervals. Here, this half step, and here, this third, and so on. So I've taken all these notes here, C, D flat, E, F sharp, G, and I've moved them down by a half step. So now, starting instead of starting on C, 0, it starts on the last half step, 11. I've subtracted one from each of them. 11, 0, 3, 5, 6. So the whole thing has been moved down by one half step. Like I said, these things don't have to be in the same order. Here, it starts out with that same C we saw, but look, it goes to G, F sharp, E, D flat. As opposed to So I can reorder these things, put them in any order I want. That being said, if I want to see how a composer has manipulated notes and done stuff with them, if I want to see how the composer has put them in an inversion or going backwards or how they've just played around with the notes, it's helpful to have a typical way of looking at them so I can use that as a point of deviation. This most typical way of looking at them is basically taking all the notes and scrunching them to the left so that it's most compact um, in its intervals at the left side. This ordering of notes is called the normal order, and I'm going to show you how to get that. So if we find a group of notes in the piece of music and we're trying to figure out its normal form, look at the group of notes and try to get it within an octave in ascending order. Here's a set of notes, but and it's ascending, but the last note is too high, it's a D. So that's more than an octave above a C. I've taken it down an octave, and now all my notes are ascending in order within an octave. Next thing I need to do is take the note I have in the beginning and put it at the end. This just makes it easier for the way the notes wrap around in the set. Next, I look to find the biggest interval I have within the set. 
and here it's a major third as opposed to this minor third here. And I reorder all my notes to start with this second note of my largest interval. So I start everything with A sharp and I just continue on in that order, wrapping around to the beginning of the set. So here's my A sharp, the second note in the interval. I start here, I have the B, C, I don't double the C and put two of them in there. And just keep on going. This is now my most compact version of notes in the set from left to right. So it's called my normal order. And when we find a normal order, we list the numbers of the intervals inside of these brackets here. Looking at things like this though, starting at 10 rather than zero, can be a bit confusing looking. It looks like a transposed group of notes. So instead of doing that, we often put it starting at zero. We move it around until the whole thing is up so it starts at zero, or down so it starts at zero. And we also have to do something else. We have to make sure that this version of things uh, isn't larger than its inversion. We'll look at that more later. But for now, for all intents and purposes, if we want to get the most compact form, we take this normal order and we change it so that it starts on zero. We move it up or down, transpose it up or down so it starts at zero. And then that's our prime form. Notice too, in prime form, it has parentheses around the numbers rather than brackets. So how do we go from normal order to prime order? Well, the first thing we need to do with the group of notes we have here is we need to get them to start out with zero. 